I'm picking up the good vibrations. She's giving me the excitations. I'm picking up the good vibrations. Good, good, good. Vibrations. <laughs> good vibrations. Ah, I wouldn't know a good vibration. Strolled up, kissed me on the lips, then slapped me on the bum. Probably just think they were being overly friendly. I am familiar with bad vibrations. I actually spend a large portion of my time trying to get rid of them. And I'm not the only one. Whether you realize it or not, a massive percentage of bike development over the years has been focused on reducing vibrations passed through to the rider. Quick fire example list? Absolutely. Wheels with spokes that bend into form in response to lateral and sometimes vertical forces, air-filled rubber tires that conform around objects, squishy seats to give that bony backside just the tiniest taste of comfort, rubber grips to give those soft, gentle hands tactile, high friction, yet forgiving surface to cling onto for dear life, hydraulically damped, air sprung, rider tuned, fully adjustable front and rear suspension to keep your squishy pile of flesh from feeling too much of the trail below. And that's not even mentioned in the flex that is designed into every single component from the bars to the frame itself. And that's a lot of ingenuity, investment, and effort into reducing vibrations. But is it enough? Not according to a study by my friend Lewis Kirkwood that found enduro racers experienced vibration levels that far exceed the safety guidelines outlined by the UK work safety body. These guidelines exist because thousands of workers using vibrating machinery developed an illness called hand arm vibration syndrome, which is famously represented in white fingers of the circulatory system damage. And there can also be a whole bunch of nerve damage that comes along with it. And really, it's just a very bad time. Come back, glasses. Don't ruin the shot. And continue. Getting your squishy bits shaking so much that your blood pipes stop flowing. Yo. And your nerve electricity stops sparking. Well, that's not proven to happen because of mountain biking. But, as that study showed, that doesn't mean it can't happen. So I'm all for reducing vibration. Yo, oh come on. The secondary thing is that vibrations just tire you out. I mean, there's all that information for your brain to filter out, and all the stress is building up in your body. Oh, it's just hard to concentrate. So what I'm trying to say is, reducing the vibration should Yo, increase performance. Or at least stop you from getting a white finger anyway. Oh, wonderful selection of products here. Oh, oh, it's exciting. So the engineers didn't stop. They kept engineering. How do you reduce vibrations further? Well, this is a hot topic in downhill at the moment. And we've seen companies come out with tune mass dampers, which filter out certain frequencies, pass back to the rider. Chain dampers, which stop the violent flapping of the chain from yanking on your cranks and passing those frequencies into your legs. Even tire inserts, which add mass to your wheels and just lowers the frequencies that can be induced in them. Whole selection of things that stop those vibrations. And now finally, he gets to the point. We have another clever implementation of technology from the supporters of this very Explain Explore video. Vibration damping grips and shoe inserts from the material scientists at D3O. Oh, and side note, with this being a supported video, for those of you that don't know, we don't review products and sponsored videos. There's just too much room for bias. These videos allow me to learn about interesting technologies. They make a fun video trying to explain it to you wonderful, kind, positive, not cynical people. So you've probably heard of D3O. They've been making the orange stuff that you pull out from your body armor before you chuck it in the wash. You have been doing that, haven't you? You should probably do that. Well, you might have noticed that it doesn't work like your standard hard shell foam protection. They have a special material formulation that is a little bit like a non-Newtonian fluid. You know, the kind of stuff that overreacting YouTubers try and run across. Go for it. It's soft, comfortable and flexible in motion, but hardens under impact to protect the wearer. Well, they also make some very different formulations designed to dampen vibrations. 
And they got into the aspect of damping vibrations rather than protecting with working with Formula One teams actually and NASCAR teams as well as making materials for NASA's Valkyrie robot. So how does it work? Well, that's why I have my trusty blackboard here, which I've had to butcher and cut the corners off to mount it at cathedral height because you're not allowed to build sheds above a certain height without planning permission in the UK. We all know about D3O's protection material that has the ability to harden and protect the rider when subject to sheer stresses. In simple terms, the molecules are all super chill when just gently manipulated and just floating around next to each other in close proximity. They're all happy until you shock it. And then they all panic. They're like, ah, hold on. And they all just grab onto each other and just ah, don't move. And they go rigid just for a moment. It's like the material is like a suspension fork with progressive but adjustable ramp chamber. D3O adjusts the formula to control how supple it is and how much it ramps up and firms up on the bigger hits. So to the damping. Vibrations are simply oscillations of an object that vary in amplitude, that's how far it moves, and frequency, and that's how often it moves back and forward over a set time period. If we take our little grip here on this bike and we trace it out over these rollers, you can see that it's actually vibrating, just at a very low frequency, and it's actually quite pleasant. It's the high frequency in the five to kind of 2000 Hertz range that does the body damage and can hinder your performance. And this comes mainly from, you know, the kind of like chatter, that kind of stuff. It's the, the smaller bumps rather than the big ones. These grips are an example of that material. They use vibration damping formulation, which is tuned to harden less than the armor version. Otherwise you'd have grips that get a bit uncomfortable when it gets really rough, yet they still dissipate the vibration from the bars. A normal grip will do this to a certain degree, but the material can't absorb as much energy as this grip can, and the compression rate on those materials are very linear. So they actually bottom out, to use the suspension analogy, and transfer more energy into the body. There's a slightly different formulation that goes into the insoles and it's tailored to the frequencies that pass through the pedals and the weight that is bearing down upon them. It's a very cool use of technology with solid theory based in scientific fact. So without identical versions of both the grips and the shoes with and without D3O's magic materials, it's impossible for me to give a clear and concise conclusion of how they perform. And besides, you probably wouldn't believe me anyway. What I can say is that the science of the material is sound and the reputation and protection does give credence to their vibration damping claims. And the products made with it perform excellently. These components are but a small yet advanced part of the vibration damping recipe. Also, I wasn't able to do back-to-back -back comparisons between them with data logging and all that kind of stuff. So I cannot tell you Yes, I definitely notice a 50% reduction in the 50 to 200 hertz range, but I can say I like using these products and I like dropping stuff on them to see if it bounces or not. Thanks for joining me on this educational journey of squishy orange things. I hope my vibrations were good and that there was not too much damping on your internet pipe. Layers.